Deep in the Santa Cruz Mountains are some of California's greatest natural wonders, redwood trees, some of them thousands of years old. That's a good boy. These are the raw materials of Gary Stevens' artwork, but only certain trees yield the unique growth patterns he's searching for. In this one small area right here, we actually have what they call lace redwood burl, and that's kind of an exotic uh, burl. What I look for in here is I look for the old trees that were cut down. What I've found is a monster burl that was underneath a tree that was cut down about 125 years ago. This one here is probably between 1,000 and 1,500 years old. You, you won't find any wood like it. The coloration, the figure, the patina that's gone, actually seeped into the grains of the wood are just spectacular. So we're going to go after it. The grains are beautiful. Almost looks like an underwater scene of, you know, like seaweed, something just kind of floating back and forth in the, in the currents. Gary has been working with wood for more than 30 years. He got his start in carpentry, but once he stumbled across the ancient burls in his own backyard, he found the inspiration he needed to create works that were uniquely his. Gary Stevens is one of the artists who's actually shaping the future of contemporary wood art. You know, you'll see bowls and vessels, you'll see sculptural bowls and vessels, but you won't see anybody quite like Gary. This is a piece of live oak burl. You have the very thick bark. You can see where the parasites had run through this thing. This piece of wood was given to me. I don't know if you've seen an olive tree in some of the orchards. If you look at the base of that tree, time has just made that thing grow in and out. Right here, in this piece here, where the old springboards were actually set in. Those are the boards that they'd set into the side of the tree that the logger would stand on, and they'd sit there with their ax, and they'd cut this down. When these artists, people like Gary Stevens, work with this material, the work is full of what might be called flaws. You know, you're working this material and you find a, a giant hole in it or a big knot or something, and you have to rethink what you're doing. The material has its own personality, it has its, its own voice, so you have to harmonize your voice with that material. And this black ash burl is very rare. This thing almost looks like an alien pod to me, and I, this one I've had for uh, about two years now, and I'm still, still working out what I want to do with it. And we'll see how it evolves, because it's, it's a challenging piece to me. Gary creates his vessels from a variety of woods, but his largest pieces are all made from thousand-year-old redwood stumps. Uh, maybe. The very fact that Gary Stevens works with such large scale is, is a challenge in itself. You know, he's working with pieces that he can't lift. He can't humanly lift these pieces. They're enormous. They weigh a ton. He has to dig them out. He has to pull them out of the earth. He has to get them into the shop. Once they're in the shop, you have to hoist them up. You have to attach them to these lathes. There's incredible technical challenges before he even gets to the point where he's actually working on the piece itself. He has certain techniques and approaches that are really um, unique in the field. It's an interesting thing because he uses the chainsaw quite a bit. And when, quite often people think of chainsaws, they think of the sort of chainsaw carved bears and these sort of very folky things. And Gary creates very sophisticated work. One of the things that I've learned over the years is that uh, opposing opposites really work well together. So some may be a little bit more concave, some will be maybe flying on the outside, flaring out. Switch over here. You can only do so much delicate carving with a chainsaw. Gary spends up to a year perfecting each vessel. 
it's a backbreaking process that has wreaked havoc on his lungs and eyes. Redwood is kind of a caustic wood. There's uh, a tannic acid that's actually in, in the wood. If I'm out here for 10, 12 hours straight, even with all the protection in the world, my, you know, my eyes will get puffed up, and it's just one of the hazards of it. Like many woodworkers, Gary got his start at the lathe in his high school wood shop. Right here, this is a relic. This is one of my first turnings. I think I was either 14 or 15 years old, and it's absolutely horrible. And I, I gave this to my mother as a present. Yeah, this is a piece of, um, of Madrone. Probably about eight years ago, I was doing quite a bit of turning, selling through galleries. I, I got to a point where I didn't like the round forms. But I like the turning. I like, I like the symmetry of it. So these are kind of some early um, rough pieces that I was experimenting with, with more of a hand-carved and hand-sculpted type of a, a form. Now, if you look at this top piece right in here, you see the natural edge of this thing kind of undulating around. So you follow that lip and the undulations around this thing. You'll see the fluting that uh, I have in my pieces. It's just a beautiful thing. Not easy to duplicate. This is in the Vortex series. It's got that uh, tornado almost type of feel to it. And it's almost like a, a whirlwind. But it's also based around that fluted shell. Much better. What I find is that my fingertips are more precise or more delicate actually than, than, than my eyesight. You know, you can look at this piece and you can see it looks, it looks perfect, but your fingertips going across it will tell me, okay, I need to, I need to take a little bit more out right here. Because what I'm looking for on this on these forms is close to perfection. Gary's work has been for sale at Gump's in downtown San Francisco since 1998. His larger pieces command up to $13,000. But in spite of his commercial success as an artist, Gary has no desire to give up his day job. We'll take that chainsaw and we'll bust out some of these sections here. I've been in the construction business as a carpenter and then as a superintendent, and it's almost 30 years now. And I got into this business because I love working with wood. And this, uh, is just a natural progression for me. At Gary's current construction project, the architects have spared no expense, flying him to Alabama to hand pick these rare yes. antique white oak beams. Perfect, right there. Bring the next one. I strive to use uh, the woods that have been l laying on the floor by nature or by man left over. And it's, it's really a great thing to be able to salvage something and create something beautiful like these beams. When you're an artist and when you have to depend upon your art for your income, quite often you start pandering to the public. Quite often you'll have to create things that the public wants. And so, by keeping your day job and doing what Gary has done, he's able to really follow his muse. He's really able to do what he wants to do, make the changes he wants to do to continue exploring. Oh yeah, this thing is just gonna be awesome. This thing is gonna just glow. I can tell by what's going on on the surface, because what you see on the surface is what's going on inside with the wood. The grain is just doing this thing, all throughout this thing. I've been looking at this one for over a year now. It's been sitting here in this spot. And every time I come down here, I'm looking at this piece 
and planning what I'm going to do with it. You only get one shot at this thing. This is the, uh, you know, it's the art of removal. It's hard to put back. Next year.